I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ha Rikakudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Shalom to the elect brothers of Israel. All right, I'm going to start in uh, Acts, the 8th chapter, verse 26. It says, And the angel of Yahweh spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and who and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. All right. And so was this really an Ethiopian that was coming to uh, worship in Jerusalem? And the answer is no. He was an Ethiopian by citizenship, but he was an Israelite by, um, by heritage. All right. So he was a citizen of Ethiopia, but he was he was actually an Israelite. Let's grab Jeremiah 32 and 37. Jeremiah 32 and 37, it says, Behold, this is Yahweh telling Jeremiah, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger. All right? And he's talking about the Israelites, and he says he's going to gather the Israelites out of all countries. Why? Because as a punishment, he scattered us in all countries and nations. So that Ethiopian that's coming to Jerusalem to worship in Acts that I'm reading about, he's actually an Israelite. All right? But you have to have the wisdom and knowledge and, you know, critical thinking, really. you got to understand that this was not an Ethiopian man. This was an Israelite who was being... You know, he was following the law, coming to Jerusalem to worship. Let's get another one in De uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 4. It says, If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will thee, Yahweh, thy power, gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. All right? So even though we've been driven into all nations and all countries, Guess what? Yahweh is going to gather us from all those countries and nations. That's why, you know, it's, it's spiritual and physical because he was from Ethiopia and he was going to Jerusalem to worship. But we know through the spirit that this man was an Israelite. He was not an Ethiopian. He was an Ethiopian by citizenship, but he was an Israelite by heritage. Just like me. I'm an American by citizenship, but I'm actually an Israelite by heritage of the tribe of Gad, I, I believe to be. All right, just like, just like Paul, he was a he was a citizen of Rome, but he was an Israelite. All right, so let's go back to Acts eight, and and he was a, a man, and um, he had the charge of the treasure, so he was he was a. He was a, uh, a noble of Ethiopia, and Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, she had him in charge of all her treasure, meaning her, her riches, her money. See? So he was, a, he was an important uh, figure in his, in his, uh, in his uh, the foreign country that he was living in, in Ethiopia. Because he wasn't an Ethiopian, right? He was an Israelite. But the fact that we've been driven in all countries, you know, we've been, you know, we've been scattered among all nations. So this is why he had to come and worship in uh, Jerusalem because he was practicing the law. All right. So let's go back to uh, Acts 8 and um, at verse 28. It says, <clears throat> was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. So he was this Ethiopian who was an Israelite by heritage, by nationality. He was reading the book of Isaiah, right? And remember, the angel of Yahweh told Philip to, to go, um, go to uh, Jerusalem, right? From Gaza. 
So everything Yahweh directs our steps. So this meeting between the Ethiopian and between um, between Philip, it was ordained by Yahweh, right? And that's how the Lord is gathering the elect in these days. If you're of the elect, you're going to come across the prophets. And the prophets are going to teach you and they're going to minister to you. And you're going to receive the knowledge if you're part of the elect, all right? So let's keep reading. Everything is spiritual. It's ordained by Yahweh. He directs our steps. That's what King David said, all right? He, he said, he directeth my steps. A man's goings are of the Lord, all right? That's in Proverbs. So <clears throat> let's see. Let's go. We think we have free will, but, well, the prophets, we know we don't have free will, but the truth is, is Yahweh directs our steps. So he, he had ordained this uh, encounter that we're reading in Acts. Because remember, he, he's, the angel told Philip to go down to Jerusalem, and the, the Ethiopian, which was an Israelite, he was, he was actually going to Jerusalem. And really, it, the purpose was for him to be taught. Let's keep reading. And that's why it says in verse 29 Then the Spirit said unto Philip Go near and join thyself to his chariot <laughs> So you know you sometimes You know because a lot of times you're out in the public And you don't, you don't share the truth with people But here and then you might come and encounter the person And, and the Spirit will jump on you And you'll, you'll actually share something regarding the truth Or you'll plant a seed You'll say hey how about Shem Yahshai Or the true names Or whatever you know so it's all through the Spirit. So right here it says, Then the Spirit said, Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? So he, he heard him reading the book of Isaiah. And, he, and Philip asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? And guess what? This is another indicator in verse 31 showing you this man was an Israelite because he showed a humble spirit. He didn't he didn't have a proud spirit and say, yeah, I know what I, I'm reading. I understand the book of Isaiah. I understand everything about the book. I've read the Bible five times, front to back. No, instead, he had a humble spirit, and let's read it. Verse 31 and this is the Ethiopian who is an Israelite. This is him speaking in verse 31. And he said, how can I, meaning how can I understand, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So he's, he was humble. He said, how, how do I know? I need, a man, I need someone to teach me the scripture. He was reading it. But you got these Christians and these, these, uh, these people who are just there in a the wrong spirit. They think they know the truth. They think they know the Bible, and they want to, they want to have a proud spirit. They don't say, "How do I know if unless someone guides me?" Instead, their attitude is like, "Oh yeah, this is what this means, and I know what this means, and I know what the Bible is talking about." And they can't even break down a parable. You see, that's why there's a scripture. I'm going to bring it out right now. It talks about that the the meek shall inherit the kingdom, not the proud. All right, let, let me uh, let me. The meek. Oops. Let's see. Let's go to Psalms 37 and 11. It says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. All right. So let's, let's look up.
Philip going down to Jerusalem and the Ethiop the so-called Ethiopian going down to Jerusalem. You see? And he was meek. He showed a meek spirit, meaning he was gentle, submissive. He, he was willing to learn. He didn't act proud like a lot of these Christians thinking that he knew what the scriptures was talking about. So let's go back. And, and, and you know, that's what it is because obviously we know we have this truth. You know, because it's, it, it's too much proof in the pudding, man. You got all these so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans all over the planet Earth standing up on our feet and, and on one accord and having this authority and power and, 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 a, and a double-edged sword in our hands. You see? And it's, the, you know, if the Spirit's working with you, you're going to be able to understand this truth if you're of the elect, you know. Verse, uh, let's read 31 again. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired that Philip, that he went, would come up and sit with him. So he was like, he wanted Philip to come up and teach him the scripture, teach him Isaiah. Let's read 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so open he not his mouth. So he was, that, that's a parable, a sheep to the slaughter and a lamb dumb before his shearer who didn't open his mouth. That's a parable for Yahweh Shai, right? So the, the, the so-called Ethiopian, he didn't know he was reading about the, the, the Lord Yahweh Shai because he knew he had to be taught. Because the Lord put a humble spirit, a meek spirit on him. All right. Isaiah, let's go where he was reading. He was reading Isaiah 53. And let's go 7. And it says Isaiah 53 and 7. Let's see. Well, I'll read 50. 3, 7, and it says, He was oppressed, and this is talking about Yahweh Shai, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Because Yahweh Shai was like a lamb, right? When the lambs get slaughtered, they're docile animals. They're meek. They have that meek, docile spirit, unprotesting. But if you take a goat and you slaughter a goat, it's going to scream like a woman, uh, you know, being, uh, being uh, you know, mugged or harassed or raped. But the lamb, when you put a lamb, when you slaughter a lamb, they, they're, they're docile, they're quiet, they just take it. This is the metaphor of the parable, like, like Yahweh Shai. He was docile, he just took, when the, when the Romans were uh, getting ready to crucify him and put him on the cross and kill him, sacrifice him, he didn't protest it. He knew it was the will of Yahweh, right? He just took it and he endured like a man, right? He didn't get... He didn't get crazy, you know. He didn't try to fight the Roman soldiers, because he knew it was Yahweh's will. All right. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And that word "dumb" it just means without speaking. All right. So if somebody calls you dumb, all it means is it doesn't mean stupid. Stupid means you you don't have intellect, intelligence. Dumb is different than stupid. Dumb just means you can't talk, or you won't talk, or you won't speak. That's what Yahweh Shai was. He was, he wasn't stupid, but he was just, in the, by definition, dumb. Meaning he didn't, he didn't protest. He didn't speak. You know, he wasn't screaming for his life. He wasn't screaming bloody murder. You know, verse eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off. Out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So the transgression of the Israelites, this is why Yahweh Shai was uh, put on the cross. Because he was, he was that perfect sacrifice that the nation of Israel, that we needed. We needed Yahweh Shai. Otherwise, we would still have not have a relationship with Yahweh. Because Yahweh cut us off. He was so mad at us. It punished us. Acts 8.32 it says, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so open he not his mouth. 
In verse 33, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. It says, and the eunuch answered Philip. This is talking about Yahweh Shai. Philip was teaching that so-called Ethiopian, because he's an Israelite, he was teaching him about Yahweh Shai, the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right. Verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the scripture and preached unto him Yahweh Shai. See? So the, the eunuch or the Ethiopian, so-called Ethiopian, he was asking like, who is this speaking of? Is this about a prophet or who is this? He said, no, this is, Philip said, this is Yahweh Shai in the scriptures. And that's why we got a lot of, a lot of times people will try and say, oh, well, Yahweh Shai is not mentioned in the Old Testament. But yes, he was. There's a lot of scriptures where Yahweh Shai is, is uh, it's just like America, right? They, he was preached, but they couldn't say Yahweh Shai in the Old Testament because just like America hadn't existed, Yahweh Shai hadn't existed. You know, you they didn't know the name. They didn't know who the Savior was. But it was prophesied that he would come from the seed of Jesse, right? And that it would please Yahweh to bruise him. That's in Isaiah 53 also, the chapter we were just reading in. But anyway, the, where are we at? Verse 36. As they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart or thy mind, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is the son of the Most High, Yahweh. All right? And so, basically, this uh, so-called Ethiopian, the eunuch, he was, um, he was, the spirit was on him so strongly after he was taught about Yahweh Shai that he said, I want to be baptized. I want to be, I want you to baptize me in that river, you know? I want you to put me underneath the water because that's what baptized means to submerge. So really, the, the spiritual baptizing is us, us submerging ourselves in this truth. Right? We're being baptized by the truth, baptized by, by fire, baptized by, you know, you, you can get baptized in water. That's, that's not a, a sin. But the reality is spiritual baptismal is um, submerging yourself in this truth. Right now, we're being baptized together, the one who's watching this video and me. Because why? We're submerged in this truth right now. right? We're, you're watching a video. You're learning something. I'm reading this scripture. I'm learning something. I Meaning we're being submerged. We're, we're, we're um, being baptized, all right, spiritually. Verse um, 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So he was captivated to the point where he was like, yo, thank you for teaching me Yahweh Shai, showing me him in the scriptures. And he said, like, I want to be baptized, you know. He had that meek spirit. He was willing, right? In verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of Yahweh caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found as a tooth and passing through. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So that was uh, another miracle, a small miracle, a spiritual um, faith lifter, faith booster. Like right as soon as he got baptized, boom, the spirit of the Lord moved Philip took him like where he couldn't, the, the eunuch didn't even see him no more. He was like, where'd he go? And just think about how that happened. Like somebody takes you to the water. One of the prophets takes you to the water, baptizes you. And all of a sudden you pop your head up and the prophet's gone. And we're going to be doing these type of things in, in, in the near future. 
Lord's will, I'm one of those prophets. Lord's will, I'm in that number. Because that's that's a, hey, that's a heavy, beautiful thing, man. You, you get baptized and all of a sudden you pop your head up out the water and, and Philip the prophet is nowhere to be found. He's already teaching in some other cities because the Spirit takes him. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rekakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles from Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akya who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to the elect.